after putting out that rate cut video, it kind of dawned on me that I was really nowhere near clear enough. And I really wanted to give you guys um, a much better explanation so that you can better understand exactly what the Fed rate cut means, what it means for you, your family, your wallet, your future. Because uh, you might want to know, is it time to buy a house? Is it time to refinance? Is it just life as usual? So let's really get into this and how the whole rate cut thing works and how it can impact everything from your mortgage hi to your credit cards even your savings and what really even is a fed rate cut so first things first federal reserve or the fed as a lot of people call it are kind of the big boss of interest rates they set the federal funds rate which is basically the rate at which the banks borrow their money from each other overnight. And they're basically the uh, central bank of the U.S. And it was created back in 1913 to help the financial system um, run steadily and run smoothly. And the Fed really has three main jobs. The first is the uh, monetary policy the monetary policy means that um, by controlling the country's money supply and the interest rates, the goal really is to keep prices stable, help people find jobs, and make sure uh, that borrowing costs don't get too crazy. Doing an excellent job there, aren't they? And number two, they are supervising banks. They, they keep an eye on the banks. They want to make sure that they're playing by the rules and that the overall financial system stays safe. The third is that they provide financial services. It acts as a bank for other banks and the government to help move money, move money around, and then again, keep things flowing smoothly. Wonderful job they're doing. So basically when the Fed changes interest rates or adjusts the money supply, it affects the economy in big ways like uh, influencing inflation and, and how easy it is for people to get jobs or, or borrow loans. Now, when the Fed cuts that rate, it's basically their way of saying, hey, let's make borrowing a little bit cheaper so that people will spend more and get the economy moving. But here's where I think things get interesting. The federal government does not directly control the Federal Reserve. They just have some oversight and they have some influence. And the Fed operates independently when it comes to making decisions about monetary policy, like setting interest rates or, or managing the money supply. And that independence is supposedly designed to keep short-term policy pressures from influencing long-term economic decisions. However, the Fed is still accountable to Congress. The Fed's chair board members and the governors are appointed by the president and confirmed by the Senate. The chair regularly reports to Congress on the economy and the monetary policy. But once they're in office, Fed officials actually serve fixed terms and then they make decisions without needing approval from the president um, or Congress. So while the government has some influence through appointments and oversight, the Fed is designed to uh, function with a high degree of independence in order to ensure stable non political management of the U.S. economy. So how do their decisions affect all of us? Just because the Fed cuts rates, it really doesn't mean everything that you borrow is suddenly going to get cheaper, especially not those long-term mortgage rates. And since I shared in our last video how this might impact real estate, I, I really wanted to start there. Mortgage rates are obviously on everybody's mind. A lot of people are, are thinking, hey, the Fed cut rates, so mortgage rates must drop too, right? Well, not exactly, because mortgage rates, especially for long-term loans, like 30-year fixed loans, are actually more tied to something else, which is the bond market. Specifically, they follow what uh, is going on with the 10-year treasury bonds. And if inflation's on the rise, or there's a lot of economic uncertainty, mortgage rates actually might go up 
even if the Fed is cutting rates. So yeah, uh, it's not always as straightforward as it seems just because you hear rate cut. I don't want you to assume that your, your dream home is suddenly going to end up getting cheaper. But yeah, if you're in the market for a home, it does probably make sense to keep an eye on how the recent rate cut by the Federal Reserve does end up affecting mortgage rates. But there are going to be a couple things to consider. And when the Fed cuts rates, it's usually lowering the short-term interest rates that banks use to lend each other money, not directly cutting mortgage rates themselves. However, mortgage rates often do follow the trend of the Fed rates uh, over time, especially for those adjustable rate mortgages called ARMS or home equity lines of credit that we call HELOCs. Fixed rate mortgages, however, can, even though they can be influenced by these changes, but they are actually going to be more closely tied to those long-term bond yields, which can fluctuate based on a lot of different factors, including the you know, economic outlook. Now, if mortgage rates are already relatively low and the, the housing market is competitive, waiting too long could actually mean that you miss out on a great opportunity. Because on the other hand, if you think that the rates might drop further and you're not in a rush, hey, it might be worth holding off a bit just to see if the lenders are going to offer better terms. It's a gamble. Now, ultimately, it's gonna be about balancing your timeline and your risk tolerance. And rate cuts can help lower mortgage costs, but other factors like home prices also come into play. When the, Fed, the Fed does cut rates, it often actually pushes consumer confidence levels higher, which can increase buyer demand, which can drive up home prices. And guess what? I got three offers on a property I'm selling now all on the same day after three months of not getting anything. All right, let's talk about emergency funds or savings accounts because you might be building those up. And here's the bummer, when the Fed cuts rates, banks tend to cut interest that they pay on savings accounts or on CDs as well as money market accounts. In fact, one of my high yield cash accounts in my Robinhood recently actually cut my APY by half a percent, which drops my earnings on that account by a total 655 bucks a year already. So while you're saving, as you're told to do, don't expect your savings accounts to just start magically earning you more interest after a rate cut. It actually might earn less. And for savers like me, who don't have any personal debts, drops can be considered a bit of a drag in that respect. Now let's go ahead and talk about credit cards and personal loans. This is some good news. And here's where things can be a little bit more fun because most credit cards have something called a variable interest rate, which means that when the Fed cuts rates, your credit card might drop too. And that could help you save on interest payments if you're carrying a balance, although you probably know where I stand on this, which is that it's imperative that you get to a point financially where you are paying off that balance in full every single month. And generally speaking, carrying balances on your credit cards is actually one of the greatest barriers to anybody's financial success. As far as personal loans, home equity lines of credit, these two are also tied to the Fed's rate decisions. So when rates go down, it can get cheaper to borrow money for things like home renovations or debt consolidation, even great investment opportunities. Now, I regularly use my home equity line of credit to make calculated investments, and then I pay it off as quickly as I possibly can. And I recently used my HELOC back in June to purchase a $131,000 machine for my drain company. And after a lot of analysis, I predicted doing so could increase revenues by $100,000 to $200,000 or more every year. And since June, we've actually been able to pay that back down to $107,000. So the plan is working out great, even paying an 8.5% interest rate to use the money. However, while my savings interest was immediately cut by 0.5%, wouldn't you know it, my home equity line of credit is still sitting at the exact same 8.5%. So side note on that though, um, while I have met many people that do use their home equity lines of credit for any number of reasons, I want to remind you that renovating your home or buying consumer items, including vehicles, which I see a lot with those tools is just plain foolish. You really should only be using tools like those for things that will improve your financial status and make you more money in the short term. On that note, let's go ahead and talk about how Fed cuts affect car loans, as well as maybe even student loans. Let's talk about that too, because 
there might be some savings on both of those too. As far as auto loans, rates can go down after a Fed rate cut, though it's not usually a huge change. Just a little reminder there that uh, buying a car next to paying high credit card interest is one of the biggest traps in our culture, keeping people poor. Your only goal uh, when you're in the market for a vehicle is to spend as little money as you possibly can for something that's safe, something that's reliable. You just gotta quit wasting your money on something that's going to plummet in value. I don't wanna beat that horse too dead, obviously. Uh, you guys should know this stuff by now. So let's move on to student loans because as far as student loans, it does depend. Federal student loans, not much change can be expected when the feds cut rates. They've got fixed rates, but if you've got a private student loan with a variable rate, you might actually see your interest rates drop, which could mean smaller monthly payments. And as far as investments, it's a mixed bag, guys. When the Fed cuts rates, the stock market usually loves that because borrowing gets cheaper for businesses, which can lead to higher stock prices. But hold up. Sometimes investors think, uh-oh, Fed's cutting rates because the economy is slowing down and that can cause some market volatility. Now, bonds, they tend to do the opposite. When rates go down, bond prices go up, but the interest or yield that you earn on new bonds will probably be lower. So if you're, uh, if you're actually putting any investing into bonds for income, this might not be the best news for you. So let's go back to real estate and the housing market where it started. Let's say that you're not just thinking about mortgage rates. You're, you're wondering how the overall real estate market might react to the Fed rate cut. Borrowing generally gets cheaper for more people, which can lead to more home buyers jumping into the market. And more, more buyers usually means higher demand. And then that can actually push home prices upward. So even if mortgage rates come down and dip a bit, you might actually see house prices climb in some areas. In fact, after a home that I'm selling now sat on that market for three months, I had no offers, even priced below market, suddenly three offers came in on the exact same day and I was able to go under contract for slightly above my asking price. So if you're a real estate investor, there's most definitely more opportunities out there when movement like this happens. If you wanna learn how to passively invest in fix and flips like I'm doing within the luxury market, be sure to, to check out the playlist in the description because I'm putting money into those projects that I can make over 20% returns on passively and I don't do any of the work at all. I just collect mailbox money on it. So just keep an eye on inflation, keep an eye on market trends because those obviously have the biggest impact on risk when it comes to real estate investing. On that note, let's go ahead and discuss inflation for a moment. It's kind of that sneaky sidekick, right? The Fed cuts rates to help stimulate the economy, but if rates stay, stay low for too long, inflation can creep up. And as we all know, by now, that's when your money doesn't stretch as far because prices are rising. Go ahead and think grocery store bills, more expensive services. Basically, everything that you spend money on is costing more over the past few years, right? So while low rates are great for borrowing, inflation can actually eat up into your savings and then it can reduce your purchasing power over time. And so it's sort of this balancing act and it can wash out. So let's go ahead and wrap this up in a nutshell. Mortgage rates. Fed, Fed cuts don't directly lower mortgage rates. Watch the bond market and overall economy instead. Secondly, savings accounts, your savings interest will probably shrink after a, a Fed cut. Sorry, savers. Number three, let's uh, go back and remind ourselves credit cards and loans. Good news, lower rates mean that you could pay less interest on credit cards and personal loans as well as home equity lines of credit. Fourth, car loans, student loans, auto loans could get a bit, a bit cheaper than they've been private student loan rates might drop if they're variable or if you're borrowing a new student loan, maybe you get a better rate there. Uh, investments, stocks, those might get a boost, but bonds could have lower yields. So you're going to want to watch for market swings on that. And of course, real estate investing, there's going to be more buyers that might enter into the market and potentially drive up home prices, even if mortgage rates do end up dipping. Lastly, inflation. If rates stay low too long, inflation could rise and everything might start getting more expensive once again. So what's the bottom line here? A Fed rate cut touches a lot of different areas in your personal financial life from your mortgage to credit cards to savings and investments. So knowing how these pieces fit together 
will help you make smarter decisions with your money. Guys, thanks for tuning in with me here on my little baby farm, my little adult petting zoo here. These are my babies down here. This right here is my favorite little rooster. That's George. Isn't he beautiful? George protects his little flock of girls back then. Those hens are giving us anywhere between five to seven eggs every day now. And uh, they are just a lot of fun. We have an absolute blast. Jesse, my better half, has built this sort of condo complex. You can see that we have what's known as a channel that goes over to their coop where they can get some shade. This is their sand bath and their little playpen. You can sit in the shade there too. And got a little side income back here where some wonderful folks have been able to take advantage of the property. It generates for us an extra $1,400 per month. At the moment, they're actually finally moving into their own house, which they're super excited about. This is the coop that we built this spring. Known as Camp Wood. Camp Wood is a namesake of my grandparents. You may remember if you've been a follower of the channel for the past handful of years, I converted this barn into sort of a man cave and it is becoming a barn again. This is really where we store all of our supplies for the chickens, looking at getting a couple cows next year. And I do have to introduce you to the latest addition to the farm, but I'm not gonna do that on this video. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can see our uh, latest furry friends. Only four weeks old at the moment. Drop a like if you're enjoying this new format where I'm kind of taking care of some of the projects I need to get done while I'm working with you guys on sharing this education makes it a little bit more interesting as we go. You get to enjoy these beautiful fall views and uh, don't have to just sit there and look at me floating around as a talking head talking about subjects that can be dry and boring, can be maybe a little more entertaining while we do it. That's the hope. So drop a like if you're enjoying that. Leave a comment below. Have you noticed any impact based on the Fed rate cut in your life in any way yet so far? Like I said, half a point drop on one of my high yield accounts, my cash accounts, um, right out of the gate. Happened the next day. So already affecting me. I'm making $700 less every year. Yippee. Uh, but hopefully uh, there will be some, some benefit. I'm also selling the house a lot more quickly. So that'll put a couple hundred thousand dollars after taxes in my pocket that I'm gonna be using to invest into passive real estate. Check the playlist below to see exactly what we're doing there. And maybe you can get involved. Until we see you on the next video, guys, appreciate you showing up today. And uh, of course, make it a really great day today and keep on cash flowing. Take care.